Okay, we're turning to talk on this uh, sequence of videos about catching and broken waves. Um, it's your next step. You've been in the white water and then you're moving on to getting that wave before it breaks. And what we want to do then is get down it and then eventually we get down it and go across, you know. Uh, so much of this will depend on the quality of the waves you're in as well. Don't blame yourself if you're not always going out and catching unbroken waves because it's difficult at the start. But also this will really help you if you're a more experienced surfer and you can already catch unbroken waves. There's always things, I'm all the time in 50 plus years of surfing thinking how can I do that better? It's one of the greatest things about surfing. Slater said it the other day, he said you're just always learning and that's lovely. So it's going to work for all sort of levels. I use the word unbroken rather than green. Oh, I want to catch green waves. Well, if you're where I'm from in South Wales, we don't see any green waves. My waves look like a cup of tea in Lantwit Major. So, um, you know, we'll use the word unbroken all the time. Okay, we said when we were talking about wave formation, and all these talks linked together, that our wave has energy and it's traveling feeling the bottom of the ocean, here it is. And this very steep vertical thing here is what most people start to catch when they're tr first trying to get unbroken waves, which is a nightmare. So here they are, God bless them, and their body's there, and they're there, and they're about, you know what's gonna happen to them, they're about to nosedive. No matter how good they are, that's not gonna work. Because they're trying to catch that wave, what we would say, too late. Now, when you're first surfing, you should think that you're going to ride bigger boards. You know, we can't say this enough. Why do you see a little kid catch an unbroken wave and he's that big and his board's that big, which is a tiny little board. Listen, that's like you riding a 10 foot board. That's why they're able to do it. So don't be fooled. That bigger board is going to help you in your early surfing get the timing to catch these unbroken waves. So once I've got the right piece of equipment to do it, everything changes. I'm going to try and catch my wave when it's far more of an angle, let's call it about 45 degrees. Now, you can't go out there with a protractor and start going, is that 45 degrees? I should paddle for it. And that 45 degrees, of course, is maybe changing quite quickly. It might stay there like San Onfre, an old man's 45 for ages, or it might be lurching out its 45 like pipeline away for a second or so and over it goes. But you guys, when you're learning, you should be thinking about trying to paddle for the wave when it's a bump, when it's rising up. So here's our paddler. They're in a far better position. Here's their head, arms are in there, here's their legs, right? They're paddling for this wave. Their first paddles, maybe it wasn't even as steep as that, it was a bump rising up. And your first paddles should be fast, powerful, and efficient. Now this is what happens. There's a lot of things going on in your mind when you're paddling for that unbroken wave. So you see people going, okay, okay, yeah, I'm sure it's a good one. They put their fast strokes in at the end. I watched a girl the other day, and I nearly should have said something to her. I just wanted to say, hey, don't paddle slow when you want to catch that wave. Paddle quickly and powerfully. Your surfboard is what we call a displacement hull when you're lying on it. A displacement hull is a boat. By your paddling it, it becomes what we call a planing hull. That's like a, a, a windsurfer with the wind behind it rising up out of the water. Good analogy is uh, a water ski. You couldn't stand on a water ski, but once you've got power, it rides up and supports you. So your first paddle strokes are trying to get this board raising and lifting out of the water. You're trying to match your speed to the speed of the wave. Now you're never gonna do it, but that's the idea. So first paddle, not wild. You see people like thrashing away, no. Strong, powerful, and we've taught you already on this series of videos how your arms should be moving your paddle actions on the board. So, you're paddling fast and strong. Now that wave's gonna come up underneath you. At that moment, so many people stop paddling. They feel they've got it and they simply try and get up then. 
Now, they're not going to catch that wave because what's happening is Newton's laws of physics says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite action. So if I've got energy coming that way, yep, there's another energy going this way. And it's pushing against you. And it's called in hydrodynamics, slope drag. Now, slope drag is trying to stop the surfer getting into the wave. But slope drag is a great thing for us because now you've got gravity on your side. You've got the forward movement of the wave, and that will be, beat the slope drag if your paddle strokes are continuous and strong. And what happens then is that slope drag comes underneath the board and it locks the board for that magic moment when you can jump up. The biggest key for me in coaching is vision. What people try to do, and you've probably done it yourself when you're learning, you try and catch the board by feeling and not by vision. You try and catch the wave by feeling and not by vision. So you're kind of going, right, it's a good one. Okay, okay, I think I've got it. Yeah, you have no idea. You've got to be here going, okay. You're looking around you. Peripheral vision is giving you information about when you should jump up. So you're seeing that moment you should jump. Oh, I've got to cuddle a bit more. Once your eyes are free, and you're not trying to think your way through catching this wave, you're seeing what's going on, you'll increase your wave count incredibly. And what happens then is that we look left and right because that's where we're going to go. I'm going to go down that wave. I'm going to make my first turn. Yeah, 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 bump and go. So at this point here, the vision must be up. Here's Dan, our instructor, talking. Uh, Sonora, a client of ours, into the wave. Look up, and he's telling him when to stop paddling. So he'll be saying to him now, paddle, paddle, paddle. And just keep talking to him, so he's paddling, paddling, paddling. Through the slope drag, he's suspended and up. It's not a bad jump at all. And because he looked up, he's able to travel across the wave. Now I'm going to draw a wave here, guys. Let's have a look. So a bit of a right coming here. There's a seagull. Our surfer, they're here. They could go straight down that wave. And particularly if they're looking, and even if they jump up the right way and they're looking that way, where you look is where you go. If you look down, you'll probably fall down. If you look straight there, you'll probably go straight. But if you're looking this way, what will happen is that you'll often turn. And you can take off with your board at a slight angle. Now, teaching an angle takeoff is one of the trickiest things, but people over angle. They're paddling for that wave, they've got the board sideways, they just don't pick up the wave. But when you're paddling for that wave, if your board is at a very slight angle, it'll help you into that idea of dropping and going across the wave. Okay. I like to see people with their vision up, they paddle in and maybe they get a little bit scared and they go, oh, and they hang on to it and they go down that way. They go, oh. And you know, you can talk to that person when you're coaching them seconds afterwards and they'll go, you know when you should have jumped up? Yeah, I know, I know I should have jumped up. They'll have felt the moment when the board was stable. Or you see people and they've come in right, they've got the right moment and they just, they blow their jump up, you know, and they wipe out. That's cool, you're learning. You're learning. But the one you don't want to be is the one whose vision is there, jump up, wave passes underneath you. And what you'll do, you'll start to actually build up fear. You'll have blown it so many times, you're like, I don't know why Disney did this, but when he drew like uh, Yogi Bear or Donald Duck surfing, do you ever notice that they were on the top of the wave and not on the wave? It's kind of weird. And how many surfers do you see just standing there like that, missing that wave? Because they're not looking around them. They're not paddling fast at the start. They're not giving themselves information on when to jump up. Now in the next sequence of this film, we're gonna show you how you kind of attack that zone, how you increase the idea of uh, where is the right moment on the wave. I use the analogy of a, a teacup and a saucer. You've never seen a saucer come to a teacup, but you put a teacup in a saucer many a time. And it's uh, a classic idea that you just have to lock yourself into that right position. It's a, an idea from a really good coach called Scott Rannikin, Teacups and Saucers. So have a look 
at that next sequence, because this is how we make this opportunity happen more and more for us. Yeah? Now what's really amazing is that we never just sit there and the perfect wave comes to us. We go to it. There's a kind of a hunting zone in surfing. And let's show you now with these diagrams what's going on. Okay, this is pretty simple. Here's the beach. Here's a line of white water. Here's that perfect steep wave that we want to ride left or right across. Here's our wave at our 45 degree angle starting to rise up. And here's the bump. And what the surfers often do, they try and pick up the wave, the learners and the intermediates in this zone here. And they just can't get it right. A highly experienced surfer will pick it up very, what we call a late takeoff, almost with the wave breaking, but we can't do that yet. So now we need to be hunting in this area here. We don't sit in that almost breaking area. We're in this area here. This is our hunting zone. And maybe we've paddled over that one. We're sitting here and we see this lovely one coming at us. We don't just sit. We can be proactive. We can go towards it. Spin and catch it. Maybe it's just perfect for us. We don't have to do much. We just sit, spin and go. And when it's rising up like that, we're identifying in the end, is it a right or a left? Jesse's vision is good. He's looking left. And that looking left is taking him across the wave. He's aware of what's going on. And that's what we're going to do. Look in these early paddle strokes. Never take your eye of where you're going to go. So our surfer in this part now is working out, am I going to go that way or that way? Now at the start, guys, you might be really pleased just to drop straight down here. That's cool. But in the end, that vision is going to take us left and right across the, the wave. So this is our hunting zone. This is where we must be sitting, looking. And quite often the surfer's going, okay, I'm here. Well, that one, I don't really want that one. But that one there, I can see that one there. That's really cool. I like that one. So these are the massive skills of catching unbroken waves, all right? Really simple and something you'll work on for the rest of your surfing life.